Hello everybody and welcome to week two of the Unix class. I thought I'd make this video to sort of explain what's going on for week two as a kind of an overview. Um, gives you a better understanding of what's in store for us. If we look at the calendar and the week overview, it looks like we're going to look at editors, commands, and utilities, shells, and Unix tools. Um, you're going to read a lecture. Uh, I'm going to show that to you in a few minutes. And then you're going to watch a video um, of me demonstrating some stuff. And uh, then you're going to you know, answer some discussion questions. And then, uh, lo and behold, you had your first assignment due this week, which is assignment number one. And if you go into the assignment section of the course, you'll find it. it looks like this. It says, Practice Creating and Using Basic Scripts. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to actually kind of demonstrate. I'll do number one for you real quick here, actually, um, show you how things are working. And uh, the way I'm going to know that you have done this assignment is because you're going to do it on a Unix server. I gave everybody an account. You should have received an email message. So one of your first tasks are going to be to try and log in and see if that email works. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to close this window a little bit here, make some room show you the instructions. So these are the instructions to log in to your Unix account that you'll need to use for this class. Now everyone has received an email message. In the email message I gave you a student number. Your student number is not student 001, it is student 01 probably or 02 or something or 03. Um, I gave everyone a unique number along with your name so it's been recorded. Uh, so only use your number and uh, your number when you log in. The password is the same as the username and you'll have to change it. Um, you, the system will automatically um, ask you to change it so we can get some security going on because otherwise everyone would be able to easily figure out everybody else's username and password. Uh, so you're going to change that password. Um, it's required. If you don't like the password, can't remember it, you can type in the password command, uh, P-A-S-S-W-D, um, afterwards to change it. And I'll demonstrate that to you in a few minutes. Um, you're going to need to install PuTTY or any SSH client on your computer unless you're on a MacBook. On the MacBook, I actually have BSD Unix on here. Everybody does if you have a MacBook um, or OS X MacBook. Uh, so what I'm going to do is show you how to get there. So you'll have to find Terminal. If it's not in your dock, then you want to go to Applications and then or go into Utilities directly. Actually, I just saw that in my menu. Um, come down to Utilities, uh, which is right here, and then you'll see Terminal in your Utilities folder. And uh, what I was just saying is if I go into the Go, I see I have Utilities out here. Utilities is uh, the same folder, and so I can see Terminal. If I click on Terminal, it brings up my Terminal window. <clears throat> so here's my Terminal window. And let me go ahead and take a look at the instructions so I can follow along with you. I'm going to log in as root, though, uh, because uh, uh, that's my access. And my root account allows me to see all of your accounts. Um, so I have the master account, and you guys have the student accounts, and you're going to do your assignment. And I'm going to go in and take a look, and I see your assignment done. Um, so what I'm going to do now, then, is uh, show you the command. Um, so if you're using SSH client uh, for Windows, um, you can go to this website here, learn about PuTTY, if you want to use PuTTY, or you may use any client that you want. It doesn't matter, all clients do the same thing, they're just telnetting into the server. So you use anything you want. I'm uh, going to use SSH. So for the Mac, I'm going to follow my instructions, number 2, number B, and uh, I'm going to type in, in fact, let me just show you what I'm going to type in. I'm going to type in, here it is. Um, that was quick, huh? SSH space and I'm root, but this would be student 001 or student 01 or, you know, whatever student number you are. <clears throat> Don't make up a number, use the one that's in your email. And then this is the IP address that you're logging into, and it should, should be reachable. Um, so if I press return, it's going to ask me for a password, and then I'm going to type my password in. When I type my password in, I'm pressing return, and then I should be, if everything's correct, I should see welcome to Ubuntu. So this is a Ubuntu system. Uh, I, it's very similar to um, the regular old Ubuntu's you, you install on your own. You can use your own um, Linux install if you have one. Uh, you can use another server if you have one. 
you just basically have to, and I'll show you how to do the assignment, you'll basically have to kind of go through the steps and just say, I did it, I did it, done, kind of thing. I'm not going to know if you did it unless you use the server. Uh, so I would prefer that you use the server. So while you're in, if I type in as an example ls, well, there's nothing there. Uh, the you know the system's pretty yeah, pretty empty right now. My account's pretty empty. Um, so I'm going to go over now and show you the assignment. So make sure you get the instructions from the email. Change your passwords. In mine, I've already logged in, so it didn't ask me to change the password. But let's take a look at the assignment and uh, see how we're supposed to do this. So this is some practice creating and using basic scripts. <clears throat> so if we look at number one. And so the so shell is both a command line interpreter and a programming language. Uh, so we're going to explain the difference between the following shells. Well, you got some shells here. You got Bash and Perl and CSH and KSH. I'm not going to define these for you. You might have to do a little research. Um, so you can go in the uh, home directory. Excuse me. You can go on the internet. And uh, as an example, let me just show you real quick here. Um, just go to Google and uh, just type in Bash shell. We'll leave this as a scavenger hunt. Oops, if I spelt it correctly. Here's bash shell. And you'll see this is a, a Wikipedia is probably going to be correct, but if you go into the bash reference manual, you'll see there's a lot of information about bash. And it says, well, what is bash? Well, bash is a shell. Um, and uh, it'll give you a bunch of stuff about it. Don't, do not copy and paste and stick this in for number one. So what I want you to do is just write in your own words. So just tell me what is the difference between these four shells. This is a Perl is a programming language actually, but it's also a shell. It's an interpreter to language. Um, so for like when you answer these questions, you just type in number one. You don't have to repeat the question. And then define bash, define Perl, define seashell, or whatever it is. Uh, Anyway, just go through each one of them and just give me a simple one or two sentence definition. I'm not looking for a lot. This is not a research paper. Just answer the question. And then when you answer the question, that's how I know you did the, did the answer. Um, now, 1B, or the second part of the one, it says, in your home directory, well, this is my home directory. If I type in PWD, I actually see it. I'm root, but you're going to see your directory. It's going to be a forward slash student something. Um, or it might just be a forward slash. Um, so the purpose of this exercise is to sort of get you to get become more familiar with Unix commands by actually doing it. So you're going to make a directory bin, and then you're going to go into that subdirectory by typing in cd bin. So well, let me just do this real quick, actually. So the command is actually given to you. So the command is here. And if you're using, well, let me show you a little sheet, a cheat sheet here. If you're using um, the Mac, or sometimes it works with other things as well, you can just copy and paste and stick it in here. So I've copied it, and now I'm going to paste it. <clears throat> so I make a directory bin. And then if I go ls, I see my directory bin, and now you see it's in blue here. Okay, um, and that's my directory. So change the directory. So you can just simply type in cd space bin, and then you see bin. And if I type in ls, now I'm inside of the bin directory, and you see my prompt has changed. And if I type in pwd as an example, I see now that I'm in root bin. Um, so this is the purpose of the exercise. I'm not going to do the whole thing for you. I'm just showing you, you know, basically what it is you're doing. So when I look into your account, and what I have is a, a master view where I can click on. Um, actually, I have a GUI for it. I just click it, click on there, and I'll see this bin directory that was created in your account. And so I'll know that you were actually in there and that you were doing this exercise. So now on on the number two. It says, in your bin subdirectory, create the following file named commands using Emacs or V or any text editor. Well, for those of you who are watching this video, let me show you a text editor that I like. It's called Nano. So if I type in Nano, N-A-N-O, and I press return, I get a nice little text editor that actually looks pretty good. I mean, it looks, to me, it's very user-friendly. Um, down here on the bottom, this is the control button. So if I typed in, like, for example, if I want to write this out, if I go control O, 
what I pressed on um, on my Mac was Control, the Control button, and the character O. And then it says File Name to Write. So what did it want me to call it? It wanted me to call it Commands. So I'm going to type in Commands, and then I'm going to press Return. And so it wrote it out. So if I exit it out of here, I'm right now pressing Control X. Now I'm out of there. If I type in ls, I see commands. This is the file. This is a text file that I just created. So if I, there's nothing in the file, I'd have to actually edit it again. So if I want to bring it back up, because it says here uh, that we're supposed to put this stuff in it. So we're supposed to create the following file named commands using vi or nano or anything you want actually, and put this stuff in it. Well, what's this stuff? It's going to be commands. So if I type in CAL as an example, I get the calendar. Date gives me the date. Uh, who gives me who I am. I'm student 16. Wait a minute. Oh, number, student 16 is logged in right now. That's kind of interesting. Uh, but anyway, um, maybe student 16 is not watching this video. Uh, they're, apparently they're not because I'm recording it while they're here. Anyway, but that's okay. If you're student 16, I'm sorry I pointed you out. Uh, but uh, we don't know. It's anonymous. We don't know who student 16 is. Um, so as an example, now I want to edit and I want to put those commands and I want to put it inside the file. So I'm going to type in nano. And then in order to get to that file, if, I'm, it's, if it's in the current directory, I put a dot and a forward slash in there, and then I type in commands. So this tells me I'm in the current directory, this dot forward slash, and then press return. Now I've brought up the commands, so I'm inside of this file. Um, or, you know, if, if I'm not, I can save it again. Or I can just, you know, not, I don't have to save the file first. Um, I can rename the file, or I can just delete the file. So I'm going to actually type in, I'm just going to type in a couple of things here. I'm going to type in cal, so you just type your stuff in, uh, date, who, but you type in what's supposed to be on the screen. And then I'm going to exit it out, and it says, you know, save modified buffer, answering no, changes, no, I want to save it, so I'm going to go yes. And I'm going to save it into the commands file, and then I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to say, well, okay, it's out there. So I'm going to type in this word cat, C-A-T, commands, and I'm going to see cal date who, which is I typed in. So cat actually stands for catenation, but it's going to concatenate the, the I-O, the standard output, with the contents of this. It's like, it's like a type command, actually. Um, and then if I, you know, if I want to go back to that file, I can type back in and come in here and go commands, and then I'm back at the file. Now there's this comment, this is a comment up here. Um, so anyway, I don't want to do the assignment for you, but I'm showing you how to do the assignment. <laughs> so you save the file, and then you leave the editor, and you try to run the script. And what happens? Well, probably not going to run. So let's take a look here. Let me actually make sure that my script is running properly. And uh, looks like it should run, actually. So I'm going to go Control X and exit out. And then if I try to run it, then you're going to wonder, well, how do we run a file? Because it says save the file, leave the editor, try to run it. Well, it's going to tell you. Just type in commands. What happens? Well, let's see what happens when we type in commands. It's going to say that the permission was denied. Wow, that's not too good because we have to change the permissions on it. So then we write, you know, we make a, a script executable by changing the permissions to make it executable. So I'm going to stop actually at this point. Well, I'll, I'll show you what happens though. We'll, we'll make it executable. Otherwise, if I continue, I'm going to be doing this entire assignment for you, which I don't want to do. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and type in change mod ug plus x commands. And if you're wondering what are these things, I'm going to lecture on it. So you'll see the video um, with these commands in it. So if I press return, and now I'm going to actually kind of run it. Let's see, commands. Look at that, it ran. So I, may, I changed the permissions on the file. And now it runs. So now I have the calculator and I have the date I think I put in there. I didn't really type in everything I was supposed to put in there. And now if I list it out, I see commands is now green. So remember up here, and this is why I kind of like the terminal because I can see the history. I have this blue bin 
saying that it's a directory. And then this green file basically says it's, it's green, it's executable. Um, so what I want you to do is just kind of notice these things and get familiar with the interface because that's really what this assignment is about. It's trying to get you to do stuff. So as we continue, now try to run the script, which is what I just did for you. As an example, however, we don't really have anything to, to answer with this. So if I made the script executable, if I were writing this in a file, because you need to submit this, you'll need to submit a Word file. So for example, number four, I could just say done. Number five, done, it worked. Or maybe I did number four and it didn't work. Number five, I could say, you know, I changed the I changed the, the command, I ran change mod and it didn't work. And, um, you know, I can just say what happened, actually. Or in the case of question number one, I can just provide my definitions for the shells. <clears throat> so some of these things, I'm going to go in and I'm going to see this. I'm going to see this commands file in your folder. So I'll know you did it. And then over here, you just write done. So. Um, so as we continue on with this assignment, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to make the bash shell is always executed as you, um, when you run this. So you can change the shell. Uh, we have some positional parameters when you call things. And what you're going to do, is I'm giving you all the commands. So create the following script called echoes.args, or arguments. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, type this stuff in, and you'll see what happens. Okay, I didn't want to cough on the video, so <laughs> I paused it. Um, okay, so as we go through um, the set date, make make a make a new script called set date, and leave all of your output, leave it in the directory, um, save it, make it executable. <coughs> Excuse me, and it's not going to re give you the command over again. You'll have to figure, well, how do I make that executable? Okay, come back up here. Where's that change mod command? Here it is, and then run it again. Um, so some of it, as you go through the assignment, it's going to assume that you're learning and it's going to not give you as much information. <coughs> so under application, um, here we have the word count, WC. So there's a command called WC and a WC is going to come back here and it's going to expect a parameter. So if I typed in, let's say for example, WC set date here. I have, uh, hmm, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to press control C. Uh, let's see if word count is on here. Uh, this might actually be a good example of what might happen with when we start typing these things. So I'm gonna, hold on a second, I'm going to try something real quick here. Uh, set date is not, oh, so it, the problem that I was doing was I was I had it on two separate um, two separate lines. <clears throat> okay, so word count counts the number of characters that's in a file, um, <coughs> a text file or a command or something. So if I typed in, let's say for example, wc and then commands, then it's going to come back with some output. Now here I think I'm just set to date. Let's see, uh, wc space set date. It's going to come back and say, well, no such file or directory. I think I was supposed to make the set date. Yes, I was. So here's the set date up here. But as a classic example, maybe there's something that doesn't work exactly. And I spent an hour or two <clears throat> trying to get this one to work, but it's just not working. The good thing or the, the, you know, the more preferred way of troubleshooting is just to actually go back up and see, am I typing it in incorrectly? Is something going wrong? And then, you know, I would have figured out, oh, set dates up here it doesn't exist, but it worked with commands. So experiment is what I'm trying to say. So run WC with commands or something and go, oh, that works, but how come it doesn't work with this? And then figure out, oh, I have to, I have to find set date. Now, as we go through, um, you're going to be making more scripts. So this is about making scripts, and don't get too um, don't get too bogged down with the definition of a script and think, oh, this is really you know this is really hard or something. But it's not. A script is just a text file that's made to be executable, and the text file contains commands. 
um, <coughs> you put things in a text file so you don't have to keep typing them over and over again. Um, anyway, so if I go down to the bottom of here, uh, there's a question. It says, uh, what positional parameters in the file and the output? And uh, this is question number 15, actually. Or, no, this is part under here, number 16. Or, no, this is the application part. So you might be wondering, well, how do I write this up? Um, just keep a chronological order of your answers. And this is not really a question I'm expecting you to answer. This is kind of like a question to think about. I'm not expecting a real answer on that. Um, so, in fact, the answer to your question is down here. So when you submit the assignment, <coughs> you have to turn something in. Uh, you have to submit it into the EMS, like you submit all assignments for traditional face-to-face -face classes as well as your online classes. And what you're going to turn in is a Word file. Um, maybe it's the Word file that you downloaded, and you're just going to take out everything and just put in did, 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 done, 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 um, and any comments or anything, you know, something went wrong or something didn't work, or I'm not looking for a summary. I'm not looking for an essay. I'm looking just for simple did it, did it, did it. And then what I'm going to do is compare this. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, I did everything. Okay. Or you could simply put in, you know, a sentence in there that says, I performed everything, everything worked just fine. And then upload the file. And then out here, I'm going to see, leave it, leave it here, don't delete it. I'm going to see all of this stuff that you did. Then I go in and I take a look. And I go, oh, okay. Looks like the person did it. And then I give you points for the assignment. So that's pretty much how the assignment works. And I know I had to explain this and was really, <coughs> excuse me, and I really have to apologize for coughing. I'm, having, I'm trying to get over a cold. Um, I figured the easiest way for me to explain this was to make this video and um, kind of just run through it and show you what I'm talking about. Very hard to explain this in text. Um, so if you do have questions, what I'm going to do is post this video in a discussion forum and then put a... Uh, a little area in there where you can ask questions and then we'll organize all of our assignment number one questions all in one discussion thread so if you have a question chances are somebody else in the class might have the same question or maybe the, even the answer so so feel free to answer people's questions and to help your fellow classmates maybe they're typing something in incorrectly or maybe something's going wrong um, so you'll be able to use this as an opportunity to get help with the assignment um, there's really no way of cheating on this. I mean, it, there's you know, if you if you do it, you're gonna have the files in here. If you don't do it, you're not gonna have the files in here. Um, and then some people will say, well, I did this on my own server. That's great, um, but um, it's it's hard it's harder for me to tell what's going on. So I I would prefer, especially in the beginning for this assignment, that you do it on the server where I gave you the access to. It just makes things a lot easier um, and then I mean unless you want to screen capture and record what you're doing and give me the video or something I can't really tell what you're doing unless I can log in and take a look at your account um, so <clears throat> I think I have uh, now that I'm not coughing anymore I think <laughs> I think I'm done actually and um, I think that um, I've practically done the assignment for you so Hopefully you won't have any more questions on it, but if you do, feel free to ask a question. The best way to get an answer is to ask. If you don't ask, you're not going to get an answer. Um, anyway, so like the no-brainer kind of way of expressing it. Anyway, so uh, good luck in installing uh, SSH uh, client. And as you can see, it's you know it's running pretty fast. I'm, I'm not on the Amazon server. I'm just from my home in Campbell and. The server's probably out in another state somewhere, um, so you have to have connectivity, obviously. You have to have the internet access, but uh, you don't really need that. I mean, I don't have that much of my internet speed. My, mine's pretty, my internet's pretty slow, so everything should work for you. <clears throat> if you're having problems with it, um, then don't hesitate. Don't wait till the end of the week. Try it, you know, earlier in the week. And don't hesitate to contact me um, or leave a message in the forum. So good luck, and I will see you online.